It's not common anymore that a running back gets drafted in the first round. This year we didn't have any, and last year we only had two. One of them being Najee Harris with the Steelers, which ended up being a great pick. But right after that pick was Travis Etienne. And unfortunately, as we all know, we have still yet to see him take an NFL snap because he had a season-ending Liz Frank foot injury before the year even started. He jokingly talked about this and said if there was ever a year to miss, he was glad it was this one. Obviously just bringing some humor to the situation, but all humor contains some truth. And since we're talking about the most accomplished ACC running back in the history of college football, multiple time All-American, and a first round pick, this is definitely worth a conversation, and we can begin to see what he's going to bring to this Jacksonville Jaguar team. But the conversation changed from where it was last year. It's no longer about how Urban Meyer uses running backs. And we also have a lot more questions answered and some new variables with this team. We now have to look at how Doug Peterson likes to use running backs. And we have a better understanding about who Trevor Lawrence is in the NFL, along with some other personnel changes to this Jacksonville Jaguars offense that's going to impact things. But we need to talk about how Doug Peterson can get the most out of his talents. And I think he's going to be used in a way that will make him a huge day one impact and it's probably not how you're thinking it was going into this video and I cannot wait to show you how. There's obviously a lot to talk about so let's get into it. The first question we need to answer is how in the world do you score 78 touchdowns in four collegiate seasons while averaging 7.2 yards a carry? Well, in brief summary for the touchdowns, you need to be good in short distance or around the goal line, and you need to have long breakaway track speed to not get caught when you find a seam. You also need to be able to score through the ground and through the air. And as far as yards per carry, of course you need an insane offensive line and really good weapons around you to create lighter boxes, which Clemson had all of this. You also need to have amazing vision as well to be able to read the blocks and make a good block a great one. But you also need to create a lot of yards after contact so you need to be able to have that quick initial burst and vision to capitalize on the holds the lines create but then go on to create your own yards with juke moves spins trucks and stiff arms that will get you the ridiculous 7.2 yards per carry and that's exactly what Travis Etienne did throughout college he was able to be the best option for his team no matter the situation fourth and two third and 15 Travis was the guy and it will likely be the same case for him in Jacksonville. But in the NFL, we see guys who fall into this category, like a Christian McCaffrey, who can be used in any situation, and the Panthers have essentially run him into the ground. So now, the question, how can Doug Peterson use ETN to his advantage while also keeping him healthy and make sure of his longevity? Well, with James Robinson already being there and Peterson not being Urban Meyer and will play him because he's ridiculously talented, that helps out a lot. But in this new era of football, there's becoming a lot more of a gray area with how we view positions. If Debo Samuel is a wide back, Travis Etienne is a run receiver, but more on this later. We can prove this by looking at how Doug Peterson's play calling duties in the NFL have shaped out. He took over the Chiefs playing calling in 2015 and took a 1-5 in five Chiefs team to go on and win their next 10 straight games. And as the head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles from 2016 to 2020, he was always using multiple running backs very successfully and with multiple different types of backs too. We have players like LeGarrette Blunt all the way to Boston Scott having success in this offense and he famously took Nick Foles to a Super Bowl running this RPO heavy style offense and now with a lot of the pieces Jacksonville has now this hire is going to make a lot of sense for the offense it's something that Trevor Lawrence is very comfortable in and he's the exact style of quarterback that Doug Peterson has had success with in the past but taking a step back and looking at their team now do they have a top five anything offensive line wide receiver room quarterback defense no but they have the bones for a highly electric offense lawrence has a huge arm and his progression as a quarterback will likely depend on his ability to process information faster speed up through his progressions and get more comfortable so there's less to think about and he can just rely on his fundamentals and i think doug peterson is the perfect coach for trevor lawrence to speed along this process he will likely simplify things to be able to get the most out of them 
Now, let's make this huge oversimplification, but it's great food for thought. Who's a more talented quarterback, Nick Foles or Trevor Lawrence? Well, this is really a no-brainer when you isolate the two, but what Foles had was a really great defense, a really good O-line, weapons around him, and he was able to use Peterson's system in the playoffs all the way to go on and win the Super Bowl, scoring 41 points against the Belichick defense. Now that we see the bones and begin to put more pieces around Trevor, we can assume that Peterson will have the ability to be even more creative with his play calling and expand it even more. But... Turning back our focus to the main topic of today's video, ETN, because all of this ties together. We realize his unbelievable gifts and he can really do it all. Long and short speed, agility, power, balance, and vision. And this run receiver thing that I mentioned earlier, this is a wrinkle in the Peterson offense that he's never had before. And I think it is the perfect fit for what they're trying to do. It made a good pick last year with a new hire. It made it a brilliant pick. But let's hop into some film to show you exactly what I mean. And now we are going to slow things way down and we can really start to see how dangerous Travis Etienne in this offense could be as a run receiver. But on this play, what they have drawn up on this play is we have James Robinson on an inside zone, zone read with a lead blocker, meaning this tight end right here is he's going to release up the field and block this corner, leaving this guy as the read guy. So Trevor Lawrence is reading him. If obviously he comes up and he takes the run, Trevor Lawrence can pull it and now he has a lead blocker. And if he stays up field, then he's able to handle it off to the running back and leave this guy unblocked. But now we can start to have some fun because what if this guy right here is Travis Etienne? Now, instead of this being a read option, this can become an RPO. And we know that Doug Peterson loves to run these. And what we're reading is we're not reading man or space, we're reading leverage. So if we know that this corner is gonna be out on top of them, then we're gonna have this all day long. And so this is what we're reading. So if we see the corner out here immediately, there's Trevor Lawrence is gonna fake this handoff and boom, immediately get it to the flats to Travis Etienne. And in college, Travis Etienne had the second most yards after catch. He is so elusive in the open field. So this is a huge advantage for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he can do a lot of things. He can line up like this. He can line up as an H-back. He can line up to split out. He can line up wide. Anything to go get him in this RPO's look style. But I really like this. Let's say we have Travis Etienne right here and we have him on this out. Then it becomes a separate read as well as we have this zone read. If this defensive end stays up, then Trevor Lawrence just hits it immediately. But if he takes the run, what Trevor Lawrence can do is he can start to attack the line and either read this corner, putting him in a very difficult spot because now instead of being a blocker he has to worry about etn going to the flat so either has to take him which leaves this huge running seam essentially being a lead blocker for trevor lawrence being a very mobile quarterback but if the corner comes up for the run to stop trevor lawrence then it's still he's able to dump it off so we start to see a guy like Travis Etienne, a guy like Kaysom Hill, a guy like Debo Samuel just ask the defense a lot of questions. And the more questions they're asking themselves instead of just reacting and playing, the better. But that's not what happened on this play. I'm going to show you why this is dangerous because that doesn't have to happen at all. This is just a regular old read option. Trevor Lawrence reads it. Defensive end stays up. can leave him unblocked. James Robinson, really good vision as the tackle down blocks. He's able to squeeze through this hole and get a really nice six to seven yard gain. And so nothing changes with this, but having Travis Etienne on the field with his ability, with his talents, not even him being in the running back position where he's so elite and worthy of a first round pick, but putting him in here or putting him here, just ask the defense so many questions and it can cause so many problems and really start to make defenses line up completely different, creating all sorts of different unbalances that I didn't even mention. And now we can look at a week five against the Tennessee Titans where they have three people over three receivers right here. And more than likely, this guy is going to be having this H-back tight end right here. And if this guy is Travis Etienne, again, we love this. Same thing applies. If this is an inside zone, we're leading the leverage. These two go out and block. This guy dumps out into the flats. The Eagles ran this all the time last year. As soon as Trevor Lawrence should see this, he should get this and pull it and throw it out to him. But what Doug Peterson also loves to do, if, if Travis Etienne is the guy he is, he can line up right here in a two-back set. He can motion up, he can go out this way, he can motion into this H-box spot, or he can do this orbit motion where he's going behind James Robinson, and this is asking the defense to flow this way, and if they don't flow enough, still hit this orbit motion, still have enough blockers on the outside, or if too many people flow to this side, then this inside zone becomes even more deadly. 
And this just starts to break the ice of how we can use Travis Etienne as a gadget guy, also taking hits off his body, not having him run through the tackles. But what if he's just a straight up receiver right here? You can absolutely do this. Or if he's this guy, then jet sweeps have a whole different type of threat to him. And Urban Meyer said he started working him out with the wide receivers. And again, like everything Urban Meyer did, this is partially right. But I think you, can, you can't count out his ability as a running back because he is a tier one elite first round running back. And you can use him and give him 10 carries a game. But then you can also use him as the H back. You can also use him in the slot and start to ask the defense so many questions and using him in pre-snap motion all the time. And I know Doug Peterson is going to thrive, especially in this RPO style offense. So now going to what actually actually happened in this play again it's an inside zone these two people are blocking and this tight end is going to be out in the flat so I don't know what Trevor Lawrence didn't like necessarily about this read besides the box looks really nice for inside zone so in the snap of the ball he's going to pull it he's going to read it right now personally I think he should be able to pull this ball out and hit the H back in the flats but he gives it to James Robinson and when you have two elite running backs you're not taking a huge step down with Travis Etienne and what this did is it created all these imbalances the offensive line did well and it kind of starts to cover for a poor offensive line if you don't have a top five offensive line putting defenses in really hard spots and using your talented players to out leverage them into adv advantageous situations and now James Robinson has a clear hole and you have the option to hit the flats right now this is why I think the Jaguars have the bones for a very elite offense this year but now we're going to look at one of Doug Peterson's most notorious games, Super Bowl 52. And this is actually one of the plays that set up Philly Philly. That's third and three, 146 in the second quarter. And he loves to use his running backs in these type of situations. He knows the Patriots are going to be aggressive and pre-snap look. This looks clear as day, man-to-man -man coverage. And he likes his running backs to be able to dual threat. And so if this is Travis Etienne... Then he knows we're going to have him on a linebacker, and this linebacker is now on an island he does not want to be on and really has no right being on. And it absolutely breaks the game open, and this was just one of the huge plays, and I can see him using Travis Etienne in the backfield as a receiver a lot in the Jaguars offense. And again, in the Super Bowl, huge play. Do you get a field goal? Can you convert this third and six? Again, Doug Peterson goes, tells Nick Foles, hey, if you see man coverage, go hit the running back on the wheel route. He sees the linebacker covering him. The safety doesn't get over in time. Huge touchdown for the Eagles, which was a big part of them winning this game. And this is going to help Trevor Lawrence out immensely. Tom Brady has abused James White for years and years, allowing him to get the ball off, dump it down, let him make a play after the catch. And I bet Doug Peterson is going to drill this into his head that he needs to look to get it out there. Not only is this a highly efficient play, but it's often open. Like on this play here on a fourth and four, the running back spills out wide open. But Trevor Lawrence doesn't choose not to go there. He doesn't even look that direction. And under proper coaching, he'll be able to see how quickly the chains can move when you get the best athletes the ball in space. This is a first round talent in Travis Etienne. And I know Doug Peterson's going to say, hey, immediately on the snap of the ball, if you see Travis Etienne have one guy, especially in a time like this, have no guys go after and chase after him, get him the ball. Because more often than not, he's going to make a huge play work out of it. And we didn't even talk about him really as a running back or go any film. And that's on purpose, but he still has elite talent like this burst to just get up the field through the smallest creases. But what I want to show you guys is his contact spin is one of the best I've seen out of any running back. So do I think they drafted ETN as a gadget guy? Absolutely not. But this goes back to our question earlier. How do you get a guy like this that already has a lot of carries and ensures longevity, but getting the most out of him? Because he is so talented in the open field and as a receiver, and he creates all these extra yards as a running back with these contact spins, having unbelievable balance just to be able to take these hits, spin off of them, and remain full speed like it's almost nothing. So do I think he's going to be a running back? Absolutely. Do I think he's only going to be a running back? Absolutely. Absolutely not. And again, I don't think Urban Meyer hit it on the head, but I see him being this 70-30 hybrid running back wide receiver, not a third down back that goes routes out of the backfield like we talked about. I'm talking about an actual slot guy who's going to work all over the middle of the field, go in these jet motions, and make the defense ask all sorts of questions. Just picture how the Niners use Debo, but in reverse. He's mainly going to be a running back and a really, really good one at that. But the Niners use Debo as a running back in certain situations and 
always make the defense wonder and get the most out of his abilities. And if you want to say this is all a reach or how do you know that he could play this hybrid position, I would say we didn't really see Debo play any running back in college. But the traits in ETN's hands, all the cuts are there, his ability in the open field, and this RPO offense that he's already very comfortable with, I think this is going to optimize James Robinson, get him on the field, and also get ETN on the field as a running back, but also get the most out of his talents and ensure his longevity. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to like videos if you like videos like these. Make sure to comment down below what you think about ATN. I know this is interesting. I know last year we went through all of the traits of how well he's going to do because if he's such a good running back. But I think them hiring Doug Peterson really makes us ask a lot more questions. And I think what we're starting to see with someone like Debo Samuel and what we see with Christian McCaffrey, how you can just run someone into the ground asking them to do everything like he was asked to do at Clemson. I think this is going to ensure longevity and like we saw in those two clips that we went probably way too in depth on that it's going to be a way to get advantages for this Jacksonville Jaguars offense and even though they might not have top five anything on offense it can make them scary nonetheless but make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content I really appreciate you guys for checking out the channel and as always I will see you all tomorrow peace